This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. For as little as $10 a month, you can help people find life-changing guidance. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu salam ala Sayyidina Rasulillah. Welcome back to Believing Future. This is the fifth uh, episode in this in this series, uh, looking at um, how to raise the next generation of believers. And today's topic is intentions and supplications. Intentions and supplications. So we're looking at the effect intentions have when it comes to having children what we intend for our children and we also look at the supplications which God's pious servants, his prophets, his messengers and others make uh, either to be blessed with children or to bless the children that they already have and we all know that uh, the importance, well you know, we, just, we know the importance of intention they have a huge impact, our intentions have a huge impact on our actions and have consequences um, which not just in this world, but also in the next, it lasts for eternity. Uh, we all know that actions are by our intentions. The famous hadith, a person only has what they intend um, from a, any specific action. And obviously getting married, having children, these are some of the most significant actions and, and things we're going to do in our lives. Um, so these, these should be governed by intentions just as much as anything else, or in fact more than anything else, because they have such such uh, you know, such importance in our lives. Um, in fact, one of the scholars actually, his name was Imam Abu Ali ibn Abu Bakr Sakran, he wrote the intentions someone should make upon getting married. He wrote a list of intentions as a, as a kind of, um, as a guide for people when they're getting married. And it became the practice to read these intentions, actually read them out loud to, in the gathering when the engagement was being made. Not, not the actual marriage itself, but the engagement. Um, so, you know, just to remind people of the higher purpose, of the implications, significance of the marriage. Um, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam alerted us to that fact when he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that marry a woman who will bear many children and one who will be a loving wife, because your number will be a source of pride to me in front of the other nations on the Day of Judgment. Another narration, similar meaning that, you know, have, have, have many children because there will be a source of pride and source of joy for me on the day of judgment. So, Hadith teaches us that um, that one of our intentions in getting married should be to have children who will please the Prophet ﷺ, will be a source of pride for the Prophet ﷺ, will be a source of joy for the Prophet ﷺ. Um, and we know that, of course, the riba, the pleasure or the uh, the satisfaction of the Prophet ﷺ is, 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 is completely one and one and connected to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet ﷺ is pleased, then you rest assured that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased. Um, and there's nothing greater than you know, Ridwan or Min Allahi Akbar. There's nothing greater than having the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to illustrate this, you know, this, this, this the importance of intention and the significance of intention and uh, we have um, the story of a blessed family in the Quran. And, you know, we have different look at different branches of this family, but Sayyida Hanna, who is the mother of Sayyida Tana Maryam alayhi salam, alayhi salam ajma'in, and she is, um, when she becomes pregnant, she dedicates the child in her womb to the service of God. And, and, and Allah records this, you know, this, you know, it was, it was, no one was perhaps witness to this. She, she just made this firm intention and this firm dedication in her, in her heart. Maybe she said it out loud. But, Lord, I vow to you, this is Surah Al Imran, I vow to you in dedication what is in my womb for your service. So accept this from this, accept this of me, for you hear and know all things. Um, so she, she, she lives, she dedicates what's in her womb, this, this unborn child, to 
the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then you know assuming that it would be a male child she would hope they would serve in the in the in the in the Masjid al-Aqsa in the temple serve the, the scholars and the worshippers and, and be in, in that blessed place um, she didn't want anything worldly from the child she just wanted to just be completely devoted to the service of God and the service of his religion um, and then of course it turns out to be um, a female child you know, she was, so she, and she wonders how could how can her intention how can her prayer be realized uh, it's a young woman couldn't really how could she couldn't foresee how she couldn't see how a young woman could serve in the temple amongst the men and the and these um, you know, priests and, and, and others and the, the, the occupying the, that place and their, their scholarly gatherings and so on. Um, but Allah, that's the, that's the thing we don't we don't look at the um, we don't be, we're not veiled and we're not restricted by the physical. But Allah accepted her intention. That's the point. Allah accepted her intention due to its sincerity. She something she did something she did absolutely for Allah, and Allah accepted it and caused her to be remembered in the Quran until the end of time. This, this intention that she made, and he, she said, I name her Mary, Mary I name her Mar- Maryam, and I commend her and her offspring to you, to your protection from the accursed of Satan, uh, Satan. And then Allah, her Lord, graciously accepted her, or accepted her in the best possible way. And made her grow in goodness. Allah accepted her in the best possible way, in the absolute and complete and most beautiful way, and He made her grow in goodness. And this tells about acceptance, this unseen thing from Allah, the qabool that accept from us. And that should be one of our du'as we constantly make. That pray for acceptance. Rabbana taqabbal minna. Accept us, accept us. So Ali said that we should be more concerned about the acceptance than the action itself. You know, and that's what she, she, she just acted with sincerity and acted with truthfulness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ex- accepted that. And, and, and we see the fruits of that. Maryam, the first of that. Fruit, the first of those fruits being Maryam alayhi salam, the blessing that she that she was, and and then from her, of course, comes Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyidina Isa, the one who who will save this ummah, who will come return to save this ummah, the ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad. So we never forget that fact. Um, he will save us from the Antichrist and the Dajjal. Um, so he, he's not just he wasn't just a blessing for the children of, of Israel. Or the Bani Israel, but he was a blessing for the nation of Muhammad Sallallahu and our fate is taid up. It's not just a, not just the fate of the Jews, but the fate of of, of the nation of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is tied up in that in that one intention. Think of the, the, how far reaching it is, like how far uh, the consequences of that intention and that sincerity. Uh, from that from that comes this blessed child, Sayyidina Maryam. And from her comes Sayyidina Isa Alayhi Ruhullah, the God's God's spirit. And then Allah, the, 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 we, from that we see also um, how the, the impact that has on another prophet, Sayyidina Zakaria alayhi salam. Um, he, um, he's present, he's witnessing the, the blessings of, of Maryam alayhi salam. He's witnessing, um, he's, first of all she's put in his hand, in his trust, in his care, and he witnesses the miracles of this young girl. She's, he sees her receiving these, these provision directly from Allah. From Allah, and she, and he prays. When he sees these things taking place, he actually prays. He, he supplicates, uh, and that's a lesson as well. That when we see blessings and we see acceptance and we see great things happening, we, we witness these things. We, we, um, we ask Allah. Man, it's a time of acceptance. It's a time of it's a time of, of closeness to Allah. So He makes this to Arabi. Habli min ladunka durriyatan tayyibah innaka sami' ad-du'a Rabbi habli min ladunka durriyatan tayyibah innaka sami' ad-du'a Lord, from your grace, grant me virtuous offspring. You hear every prayer. It's a prayer we should make, uh, we should make, make a habit of making. If, if, whether we, some of us may be wishing to have children, and that's a du'a for that. But also if we already have children, it's a du'a that they be tayyib, that they be durriyat tayyibah. And not just our immediate children, but the Riyah continues, you know, our, our progeny, those who come after us. And not, not just our children, our, great, our, children, our, great, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, and so on. That we pray for, for, for them to be tayyib, to be, to be pure and to be blessed. 
not just um, and, and that is the you know that is a desire that is the dua that's a prayer that's a what the, the Allah's chosen servants ask for they want for, for pure virtuous children um, not not nothing worldly about this nothing um, you know some some of us have a concept of success uh, our children we want our children to be successful in a worldly sense and this is this is this is uh, this is purity that they're seeking this is elevation that they're seeking and um, another place in the Quran being the Surah Maryam we have a we are told the state that Zakaria makes his plea uh, he is he, he complains of his weakness in his old age and his uh, fear that no one inherit from him and when we say inheritance it doesn't mean um, material it doesn't mean money or property um, it means the spiritual inheritance that he's worried about he's worried that he's going to die and no one he's not he doesn't have an heir to inherit this uh, legacy that he has of of knowledge, divine, of deep, you know, religious, spiritual knowledge and authority, and, and even prophethood. You know, his, his and his son is due, will become a prophet in his Sayyidina Yahya. And so, when he prays for Allah in that state, he receives the good tidings of a son whose name is Yahya. Is Yahya. Um, but this, you know, this is these all these the, these story. Why are these stories being told to us in the Quran for us, you know, to take? Know and to reflect on and look at look at how uh, intention and supplication and uh, and what, what what's being asked for you know if you hone in on what's actually the words that are being said and what's being asked for you know this is a speech of God you know that has is timeless and it's limitless um, and this is what 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 we're being taught here and finally in um, uh, we have another very special and important dua in uh, the end of Surah al furqan again prayer for, for progeny, prayer for for goodness. Uh, Allah describes his Ibad al Rahman, the servants of the All Merciful, the chosen servants of Allah who walk upon the earth in humility, and that they are, uh, you know, they are in a state of balance in terms of their, how they spend and they avoid disobedience. And Allah describes all their attributes and their control and their their good character and their humility and so on. And then at the end. The final quality is, or the final words that seals this description of them, this, these 12 or so qualities, that they are people that say, رَبَّنَا حَبْلَنَا مِنَ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Another dua which we should repeat and know and understand. Our Lord, make let our spouses, or let our, let our spouses and our children be the delight of our eyes. Let our spouses and our children be the delight of our eyes. Let them be the qurata. Qurata Ain or Qurata Ayun, the the cool, literally the cooling of the eye. The, the Arabs have this thing that, that something which pleases you so much it like it um, brings a coolness to the eye, it brings a joy to the eye. It brings us uh, another meaning is it brings a your eyes settled. You know, it, it's, it's it's pleased with what it sees. Um, and uh, the Wajana Nil Mutaqin Ima make us. Good examples or good, um, uh, you know, um, leaders or, or exemplars or however you want to translate it, make us good examples to the people of of taqwa, the people of piety. But this this is a dua that they make. That hablana, yeah, my Lord, Rabbana hablana, my our Lord, the, 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 the nurturer, the carer, the giver, give us for us this this joy. Of witnessing goodness in our spouses and in our um, in in our offspring, and this is you know this, this points to the this harmony in the marriage, there's a blessing in the marriage that your that your wife or your husband is a cooling to your eye, is a joy um, in this life, and more importantly in the next life, and and then your children, your progeny, will also likewise uh, be a source of joy, be a source of joy, because you see. Um, if they have, you've, you've made the effort to, to raise them, to um, nurture them, nourish them, and, um, and you see the results of that in the next life. You see the, the fruits of that. You see that the, the state that they're in, and they'll be with you in the next life. You'll be joy to you, not just a joy, not just a joy to you, but a joy to the Prophet as we mentioned before. That'll be a to 
the pious to yourself, to 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 you, to you, to, you, to the pious, to the people who who, who really matter. Um, that's that's what they ask for. Ask for. There's no again. There's nothing worldly about it. It's, it's it's all just wanting piety and uprightness and and beautiful qualities that will then allow them to be united in paradise. Um, and um, so these these are these. Are, this is what we learn from these supplications and these. Um, please with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that make us like this and, and make our, our children a joy, make our children, our children pure, make them pleasing. This is this is the prayer the prayers that the prophets are making, this is the prayer that the pious are making. So uh, the intentions we've heard the intentions that they make, they want their children to be in service, they want their children to be blessed, they want their children to be um, to be close to Allah. That is that is their request and that is their their their, their, their intention and the intent the intent the, intent, the, sub, the intention and supplication are very limited. Your intent are very sorry very lim, uh, linked together. That what you intend and what you pray for are very uh, you know um, are, are um, you know there's a lot of crossover in that. Um, but but also it doesn't it doesn't negate of course um, you know taking the means. We shouldn't we shouldn't just say well I've made a good intention and I've Made lots of du'a and it's all going to be good, but you know, the, the, we have reliance on Allah, we have trust in Allah, but also it means it doesn't mean we don't take the means, of course, which we'll be talking about in, in upcoming sessions, of course, the actual work of tarbiyah. But look at the beginnings here. The beginnings are, are pleading, are turning to Allah, intending, being sincere intentions, and pleading, pleading with Allah, and begging Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, make our offspring and our children jo jo joys and delights to our to our eyes, and make them tayyibah, make them duriya tayyibah. Blessed offspring, and make them uh, the people uh, devoted to Allah. So and make us people that are devoted to Allah. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit SeekersGuidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org forward slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.